Hello, this is Top Fake News. What is pro fake news about one so curing in Ukraine? This is Elina Tsuhunyako. And Margo Gontar. On the 13th of February, a score of Russian mass media, including Russian news agencies Rus Novosti and Russia's foreign ministry agency, wrote that Bulgaria's parliament had recognized the Crimean Peninsula and Sevastopol as part of Russian territory. However, in fact, this statement has been announced by leader of the Bulgarian far-right ultra-nationalist party, Ataka Oritek, Volin Sidorov alone so far. In particular, his comment came during a meeting in port city Sevastopol, but his party, Attack, which demands Bulgaria discontinue its NATO and EU membership, is known to have won only 4.5% of votes. Therefore, its representative can hardly voice the opinion of the entire parliament of the country. Certain through Bulgarian sources, we have also failed to track any information that would prove the statement reflected the position of the Bulgarian parliament. German Business News Agency published an article dedicated to an H.R. 5859 Act signed by Yes President Barack Obama into law. Also, saw the article claim it will support and encourage the privatization of the energy sector of Ukraine, as well as the funding of the military sector of Ukraine and Ukrainian mass media by the United States federal budget. Soon after referring to the article by the German news agency Russian portal, Polit Navigator posted its own news titled Obama signs law on privatization of Ukraine's energy sector. But in this case, journalists scroll the line claiming that the bill signed by S. President will enable the U.S. privatizing Ukraine's energy industry. Therefore, all branches like oil, gas and renewable energy sources will go privatized. At the precaution, the U.S. government is introducing a project in the framework of the bill on establishing a network of mass media that will be reportedly financed by the U.S. Department of State, the article runs. However, the act says nothing about privatization itself at all. It mentions only the necessity to reduce Ukraine's energy dependence on Russia's gas deposits to secure a favorable investment climate to increase its resource energy efficiency to develop domestic energy resources as well as alternative energy. Investing into a sector and company's privatization are based on two absolutely different ideas. Moreover, the very assumption is totally absurd it is completely beyond competence of a foreign president and parliament to adopt decisions on privatization of Ukraine's economic sectors. The act also says nothing about the creation of a network of pro-American mass media in Ukraine. Instead, it foresees the support for Ukrainian public organizations. Moreover, the document run that the U.S. shall support public organizations in Russia, too. On the 15th of February, website of Alisa Community again discussed a David Bowie performance topic. It posted September news by anti-fascist community about the musician's intention to arrive in Donbass region of Ukraine for performance. The statements that allegedly quoted David Bowie, commented during his alleged interview to British publication The Daily Telegraph, ran the following. I'm taking off my head to the citizens of eastern Ukraine for their courage and desire for freedom. In fact, they are standing up for their independence against the entire so-called Western democracy that is totally rotten and deceitful. Perhaps, of course, it's unsafe there now, but trust me, I'm also dreaming of being a hero one day, at least for a while. This statement was already refuted by Sloan and Line News Com UA agencies last September. And the Daily Telegraph has never published such an interview. There are no proofs to support David Bowie's plans to perform in the region or any his announcements concerning it. The last words in the statement might be probably a reference to a famous song by Bowie Heroes. On the 14th of February, Russia's Channel 1 quoted Jim Psaki in its report dedicated to briefing with the U.S. Department of State spokesperson with translation running. U.S. Department of State spokesperson Jim Psaki found herself in an awkward situation during a dialogue with reporters. The change of the government and then the beginning of last year was unconstitutional and you supported it. This is not accurate, nor is it with the history of the fact that happened at that time. Well, I don't think I need to go through the history here, but since you gave me the opportunity, as you know, the former leader of Ukraine resigned of his own accord. Dozens of mass media sources immediately spread the news claiming that Jem Psaki is not knowledgeable about the general new facts and talks about voluntary resignation of Viktor Yanukovych. But let's read the briefing transcript that is available on the official website of the U.S. Department of State. The message runs, in fact, well, I do not think I need to go through the history here, but since you gave me the opportunity, as you know, the former leader of Ukraine left of his own accord. Therefore, in fact, she stated that he left of his own accord while mass media misrepresented translated the message using the word resignation. However, in English, the word to leave in this case is understood as to go away in physical aspect. In other words, to abandon, to depart, to withdraw, which matched the past words. And on the contrary, the words to retire, to resign, to quit, emphasize a person's voluntary intentions. 
On the 20th of February, the largest Russia's online media source Lenta.ru published an article titled British Parliament Condemns EU Intervention in Ukraine's Crisis. The article runs, the House of Lords EU Committee stated the EU and Great Britain misread the moods in the Ukrainian society before the crisis flared up. The statement was part of the message posted on the United Kingdom's Parliament website. It continues, the EU and to some extent the UK are to be blamed for sleepwalking into the crisis. According to the committee, the EU member states lost political control over the negotiation process aimed at associating Ukraine into the EU zone. In line with Russia's misestimation of Ukraine's leadership's intentions and plans, this would lead to unprecedented consequences neither Brussels nor Moscow had ever expected and meant. The statement also notes that some mistakes are to be blamed on the lack of experienced experts within foreign policy structures of Great Britain and the EU. After a short search, we managed to find the original news source, the British BBC World Service, as well as the above-mentioned report by the House of Lords EU Committee. However, their statements disprove the article by Lenta.ru. The BBC also quotes a claim by the House of Lords about Europe sleepwalking into the crisis. It also writes about the lack of qualified experts. However, by and large, the report accused the EU of catastrophic misreading of the depth of Russian hostility to its plans for closer relations with Ukraine. The authors cite British Prime Minister David Cameron, who claimed that blame for what had happened in Ukraine lies absolutely squarely with Vladimir Putin and Russia. The committee's report also said Britain had not been active or visible enough in dealing with the situation in Ukraine and claimed that for too long the EU's relationship with Moscow had been based on the optimistic premise that Russia was on a trajectory to become a democratic country. The result, it said, was a failure to appreciate the depth of Russian hostility when the EU opened talks aimed at establishing an association agreement with Ukraine. It also said that the UK had a particular responsibility to Ukraine because it was one of four signatories to the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, which pledged to respect Ukraine's territorial integrity. Live News posted a news warning that a drama Russian band Karozi Mitala and Andriy Martinenko have been recruited for service in Ukraine's army. He will allegedly serve in a music platoon of the voluntary battle on Azov, but it appears that Mr. Martinenko never gave personal commands on the matter, and the news is rather based on the interview with the band leader Sergei Troitsky. He said in Varikola that the drama had been detained right in the street in the city of Rivne, Ukraine, where he arrived to visit his family, and he would have no alternative but to accept. Leader of Russia rock band Korozi Metala has been recruited for service in Ukraine's Azov Battalion. Andriy Martinenko is going to fight alongside with Ukraine government forces for the next three months. Recently, the third stage of mobilization has been announced by President Poroshenko and traffic police with military commissars are patrolling the streets, and they catch passerby to serve them notices and send them immediately to assembly places. Andrei was not an exception. He was detained by recruiting officers and conscripted by the armed forces of Ukraine to serve in the Rivne Territorial Azov Battalion Detachment. The news was spread by some Russian and Ukrainian news agencies like RIA Novosti, Espresso TV, Correspondent.net. However, this information contains some confusing facts. Let's highlight them. First of all, it's legally impossible to force a person to serve in a voluntary battalion. A voluntary battalion exclusively consists of volunteers and excludes a draft is conscripted by the armed forces of Ukraine. Secondly, in Rivne, where according to Mr. Troitsky, the band's drama was detained, as there is no Rivne territorial as all battalion detachment, the battalion is currently stationing in the city of Mariupol. Thirdly, mobilization mechanism does not imply vehicles patrolling in the streets and recruiting passerbys for army service. An audience and army recruiting bureau appearance scheme is generally accepted. Finally, Andriy Martinenko personally refuted the news in his commands to Ria Novosti, saying it's a total balony. I'm currently in Moscow and I have not received any army notice, at least because I'm over 40 now, he stated. You watch the fake news. It's a voluntary project that is not funded by any political party, organization, and especially state department. Where is news and make reports for our audience and would appreciate any support. All money transfer details are available at our website stofake.org or below this video. In a week, we celebrate the first anniversary since our project establishment. We hope you still find it useful and important. Bye and see you.